One of the biggest struggles I think Christian women fight in this day and age is anxiety. They struggle with this because they have a hard time remembering their identity and their worth. Want to know why I think this? Because I see it in my life, in the lives of the women around me, in the lives of the women in our church. I see it in the lives of women everywhere in our generation. But first off, Welcome to another Christian motivational and inspirational video here on how to faith a life. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But let's get into the video. So let's get real. You are not your Instagram feed. You're not. You're not your children's grades. You're not the quality of your family's diet. You are not your grandkids' achievements. You aren't the brand of clothes that you bought last week. You're not your husband's vocation, your family's income, whatever political party you identify. You're not any of those things. You are the Lord's. And you might be like, I know, I know. Okay, cool. I see where she's going. Let's move on. But no, 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 no. Let's like actually evaluate our hearts here. What do you feed your heart every morning? What's like the first thing you look at or the first thing your mind consumes in the morning? Do you scroll Facebook while you wait to get enough energy to climb out of bed? That's the first thing you consume for the day. That's the first thing you're feeding your heart for the day. Did you know in the morning, the first thing that you eat affects your metabolism for the rest of the day and your body in its fat burning mode versus muscle building mode or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not a scientist. But the first thing you do in the morning will affect the rest of your day's health and your body and how it interacts with the world and how it digests your food and all of that. How much more so with our heart, the first thing we feed our hearts in the morning says a lot about what we sense is important, how we're going to interact with the world the rest of the day, and it kind of kickstarts our metabolism for, for how we're going to react when we consume lies, when we consume con temptations, whatever it may be. When we see that we're struggling with anxiety, I really think we have to, first of all, evaluate what are we consuming? What are we telling our heart is important very first thing in the day and then all throughout the day? And then how about when you zone out? Where does your mind go? Whether you're driving in the car or doing dishes or folding laundry, what are you often zoning out and thinking about? Where does your mind go to? That is a huge reflection of your idols. And you might be like, whoa, she's like stepping on some toes here. She's bringing up idols. But I'm for real, this affects our anxieties. To be honest, I go to my failures. I rethink situations and think about how I should have worded things better or how I should have done something different. I think about YouTube and how I really just want to be an encouragement here. And I think about social media and so-and-so, so-and-so. I worry. I worry about my husband's job and our finances and my kids' health and their well-being. And sometimes I dream about what I would buy if we played and won the lottery. <laughs> it's embarrassing to admit to y'all but it really truly is a great example of things that I struggle to not idolize. And I think it will be for you to evaluate the next time you catch yourself zoning out, what was I thinking about? What was I valuing? All these things affect our anxieties. And the sad thing is a lot of our anxiety, a lot of our idols center around what other people think of us or our safety and security and trying to control those two things. Because you see, I want Christ's truth to be the blood that runs through my veins, to be the air I breathe in and that I breathe out. I don't want to live my life claiming that I love God or that I follow God and not have it permeate my entire being. I'm nothing outside of Christ. Nothing. I could spend all day on here, all day working on making videos, or I could spend all day folding laundry, or doing laundry, or doing dishes, or doing house chores, or scrubbing my house cleaner because my kids are really dirty, or working out all day long. <laughs> but none of it does anything if God is not in it, because he's all that matters in this world. Not what others think of me, not my security or my comfortability, not even my health, nope. All those idols crumble to their knees before the throne of God. Romans 8 says, 
So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. What does this mean? That there's no condemnation, no guilt, no shame, no inadequacies. Once we are the Lord's, we are his, and he has paid for all of those things. We are no longer not worthy. The Holy Spirit is living and working in us, sanctifying our hearts day by day, making us holy, working in us, sanctifying us, and growing us in the freedom of life in Him and away from the power of sin that leads to death, like that verse just said. Okay, hold on one more verse, just one more, real quick. Colossians 3, 10 through 11. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric or uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. So where am I going with all this? We established that we struggle with anxiety and a lot of that is impacted by our idols and our lack of understanding of our worth and our value. We established that those idols don't compare to Christ. They fall to their knees before the throne. Do you, do you fall on your knees before the throne of Christ? Do you fall on your knees and say, God, I'm a broken sinner that wants to idolize the stupidest things. If it weren't for you, I'd be good as dead. You are my all in all. And I say that, but I don't always live like that. Help me to believe it to my core. Father, be my all in all. Be my life. I'm tired of running after these idols and this worry and wasting my life away, feeling like I'm not enough and not really knowing where I belong. Be my all in all. And Jesus responds, I love you this much. On the cross, he's shouting our worth. He's proclaiming our worth to the whole world. And that he says, you are my child and I bought you with this really expensive price of myself. That's what Christ says to us. And now your immovable, unshakable identity is as his child, as his heir, as his princess. You join in with all of creation, shouting his praises and his glory. With your innate value and the gifts he's given you, you glorify him. You don't need to parent like Sally or sing like Patricia. You don't need to paint like Erica or run like Samantha. Your value is given to you because the creator of the universe died for you and because he says you're valuable. He's obsessed with you and finds you to be a good, beautiful creation in your wrinkly body or your tiny body or your deformed body or in your disabilities, in your gifts. He finds you to be perfect in him. And I dare you to look at the cross and still try and worry about whether or not you're gonna have enough toilet paper or if you're gonna have enough money to buy the food you need this week. I dare you to look at the cross and say, but God, what about, because he's got you. If he's willing to die for you, how much more is he gonna provide all that you need? If he created the world, sustains everything, initiates everything, look at Colossians 1, how much more is he able to give you all the things you need so easily? When we are anxious about our value, about our identity, about if we're enough, about where we belong in the world, what the Lord's plan is for our lives, whatever. We are looking to the left and to the right. We're comparing our lives to other people. And all the Lord is doing is saying, look up at the foot of the cross, look up and see the sacrifice he's made for those he loves, for us, sinners, unworthy. What more value and identity do we need? We are given it all in him. Do you believe Christ is enough? Because if you do believe he is enough, that he's your all in all and that he satisfies all of your deepest longings, you will run to him. Today, tonight, wherever you are right now, run to him. He satisfies our deepest longings. He is unchangeably good, faithful, kind, and loving. And that you can bet your anxieties on.